Hello there people, welcome back. This is Christian, this is Fusion for 60 at my computer. Uh, this is what I like to call a multi-turn wavy washer. It might have a really nice fancy mechanical name, which I don't know. This is for closest, I can do approximation of this. Uh, I think there's still one small problem that my uh, this wave as it works around, uh, is around, uh, way around the washer, is on a helix, so the base is not really fully flat. I think it's manufactured in this way and then it's flattened out. And this is from a question on Facebook on how to create this. And I should be totally honest, I suggested the wrong, wrong workflow to stop with. I suggested my old wavy washer. And I plan to do one of these and then do a copy and rotate and then rectangular pattern and everything. That's one possibility. It's not really true, as some people pointed out in the uh, Facebook post. This is one single body that is wavy round, 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 round. So it's one piece of uh, sheet metal that's creating this. So let's see if we can do this thing. Here is my model. It's driven parameters, so we can change things and play around with it. But for now, we're going to start a new design. And the first thing we're going to do, we're going to start with some parameters. I want to drive everything with parameters. You can put the sketch you want to do, but I like to do this like this. We're going to start with the inner diameter. That's going to be 31 millimeters. I uh, this is just numbers I played around with it. OD outer diameter 34.5. Uh, we gonna do uh, the thickness uh, thickness of the coil or the washer part. This is gonna be 0 0.3. Let's see how many numbers I forget. Uh, we need a Let's have a look at the picture if we can talk about things. So we have the inner diameter, we have the outer diameter, we have the thickness of the material, and we have the height of the wave, like I call it. Call it. And by how I define the height of the wave is from top of this here to the bottom here. It's so not from wave to wave. This is on one turn. I'm looking at the height up here, down to the height of here, and I'm doing it from the center of material. You can do a couple of different ways. This is a way I'm setting up the dimensions. If you have some specific dimension you want to hit, you need to do some math and playing around. So let's do a uh, height of the wave. And I did that was for two millimeters. And we have four parameters so far. Now we have two interesting parameters. If we have a look at this, you can see it's a wave. It's going round, 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 round. And the interesting thing, of course, is that uh, it's meeting at there's a peak, and this is what we call normally a valley in a sine curve. So they are out of phase. That means this is like doing a half extra wave every time. So can it be correct? Let's do some counting. I'm going to count the holes here. Yeah, one. Sorry. I didn't want me to move things around. One, two, three, four. We can hardly see those. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There's an odd number. That's obvious because we need to have odd numbers to have. Uh, these to meet out of phase. But in the design I have, I think of this like five waves. A wave to me is a complete up and down. So we start low, go up, go down, or wherever you think of this, it's a complete wave. And we do some counting, we can see we have one, two, three, four, five, and then a half more. But in my parameters, I will do this like this. I will do number of waves. I'm going to change this to no units. It cannot have a unit because when then fusion will fail. I'm going to call this five and I'm going to add a small comment. Uh, design adds half wave. What's going to do? We're going to do, I'm going to do this in one of the features. So it's easier to remember that this should always be a, a digit number. No, no, no half turns or anything like that. It makes it easier to do the things. And then we're going to need one more. We're going to look at uh, how many turns or levels we have. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 of those. And I will not do it with 11 to start with because I'm, uh, I'd am i hate to be surprised what Fusion does sometimes. Uh, I'm going to call these turns, number of turns. Once again, sorry, no unit, of course. I'm just going to do two for now. We know we're going to change that to 11 later. So that is basically all the parameters we need, but I need one more. And that is because I'm going to 
save this for now. Uh, when I do this, I'm going to use the emboss command. And I am then doing um, emboss over and over around the same cylinder. And that can be quite confusing. People sometimes miss that because uh, if most people who do an emboss, you think about doing one circumference and then they say, okay, that's done. And that's possible. But you can do a sketch pattern or a sketch profile that's larger than one circumference of the cylinder and emboss that as long as the profile doesn't self intersect or touch. So we cannot have that this two waves here is touching. So I need a small, small clearance in between the waves. So it, it, yeah, it makes the model slightly incorrect, but that is that fusion can do things. Change parameters, we're gonna add one more. So we're gonna add our clearance. Do it 0 0.0, whoops, sorry. I can't get correct on the keyboard. 0 0.01 millimeters, just a small, small clearance. We can see we maybe you can make it even smaller if you want to. This is just to get emboss command to work. So, okay, now we're gonna start sketching. And uh, as I now play around with for a while, if I forgot to save it, don't forget to save your files. I'm just using the demonstration, I already have the files, so I don't care about saving thing. So, create a sketch, look in front of the top, we're gonna say to C on the keyboard to start a circle. This circle is gonna be an ID in the diameter. Gonna finish sketch, gonna do an extrude, and we want to do it into this. So the cylinder that we're creating is the base for our emboss. So we're gonna do two sides. So I don't fall outside of the cylinder. The cylinder is gonna be removed later. We're gonna do these, uh, the height of the waves, multiply by number of turns upwards. And for safety, we can also multiply it by two. And downwards, uh, hive of wave. I'm gonna make the emboss upwards, but I need some material down below so I don't fall outside of a cylinder. So I'm gonna simply do one hive, hive of wave multiplied by two, and that should be enough. Just open up and see we have one body and one sketch. So I'm gonna finish hide the sketch for now. I have turned off auto hide when I do things, so the sketches remain visible for me. We're gonna do a sketch, we're gonna look from the front, so we're gonna hit this plane, front, yes. Hide the body for now. We're gonna do a line, yes, yeah, simply from here and somewhere straight out here. And one more line from here. Pull it out and make sure we get the perpendicular constraint down here and let's just finish like that. That's all we're gonna need for now. We're gonna start dimensioning from here to here. This is going to be the length that we wrap things around the cylinder. So this is going to be connected to the cylinder. So we can do the inner diameter and basic geometry. Uh, ew, sorry, I'm just tipping things around here. Multiply, so inner diameter multiplied by pi. And remember, large letters, not small, small ones. Uh, that gives us circumference, but that is for only for one. And we're going to multiply this sketch by the number of turns, like that. So this distance from here is uh, the circumference around multiply the number of turns. And we're gonna do a hive here. We're gonna do like this. And this is gonna be our wave hive. Multiply by the number of turns. So we had a small line here tilting upwards. And now we're gonna create a visited line here. We're gonna dimension this, click here. Now this can be a bit tricky. We want this dimension to be a, a line dimension. So we're gonna right click and select aligned. And this needs to be, I'm gonna start the parenthesis because I need that, height of the wave minus the thickness of the wave and parenthesis and divided by two. So let's do it once again, let's check this. We have the height of a wave divided by the thickness, uh, multi, sorry, height of a wave minus the thickness, sorry, I'm, I'm off today. Height of a wave minus thickness divided by two. And by that, we had done everything we needed. We're gonna finish sketch. And we're gonna go over to our surface tab, create, and we could do a, where are you? Sweep. What will we sweep? Let's look from the front and zoom in. We want to sweep this little small line here. 
and where the path is going to be this long line here, like that. Now, the interesting thing, we want to make a sine wave. So we're basically going to spin this around and create a helix. We're going to use twist angle. And the twist angle is, of course, going to be the, our number of waves. And here's the important part, plus 0 0.5. Here's where we add the half wave, so we get the out-of-phase behavior. Put parentheses around that, so that is what you need for one turn. So we multiply this by the number of turns. Hit, uh, oh, and of course, multiply by 360, because one turn is 360 degrees. So it's the number of waves, plus 0 0.5, or one half wave. And all that sum, multiply by number of turns, and now multiply by 360. And OK. And Fusion starts to think. Thank you. And we have a nice little thing here. So what we're going to do now, we're going to hide this sketch for now. We can create a new sketch once again on the front plane. P for project. And what we are projecting is this wavy part here. Going to hit OK. And simply just finish the sketch. And now this surface body has done its work now. So you're going to right click it and select remove. Do not do delete. You have to delete or remove it totally from the design. Remove removes it from downline uh, in the timeline. It still exists before. So remove cleans up things. Yes, we could do offsets and things in the sketch, but I am a bit lazy sometimes. So I will use the solid extrude. Switch over to thin extrude. Select the line. And the distance, let's look in this direction. I'm going to pull it in this direction. You can see that's going to be minus. Yes, thank you. So we're going to do minus ID in our diameter divided by 2. Uh, this is not really necessary. You can do a short term of that, but I just like to do this because if I turn on my cylinder, you can see this profile now lines up with the tangent plane on the front of the cylinder, just for visibility for myself. The wall thickness is, of course, going to be our thickness. Here comes the important part to for the emboss new to self intersects. This is where I do minus the clearance I want. And wall location, I'm going to do that on the center. And I hit OK. And we get our little body. Let's hide one more sketch. Let's look from the front. And we have now a nice little profile here. Yeah, if you zoom in, you can see sometimes Fusion uh, shows uh, arcs and circles with uh, simplified, and that's just a graphic thing. So now we're going to create a new sketch on this face here. I'm just selecting the front face. We can see if we move out, we are sketching the front. P for project once again, selection filter specific entities, and we can select this full face. We click on the face, not click on the edge, click on the face. Hit OK. Finish sketch and this body has done its work. So right click, remove, turn on the cylinder. And we will now do S on the keyboard and start typing in and boss and boss. Thank you. Sketch profile, our little fine wave here. Zoom out. The face is going to be this and it throws this around here. Now comes the depth. We need to somehow get the outer diameter into our design. This is where we do it. Parentis, OD, outer diameter, minus ID, inner diameter, and parentis. And of course, uh, these are the diame diameters, and we are doing the washer out like a radius, so we need to divide it by two. Hit OK on the keyboard, hide the sketch, and we have parts of our washer. Now we have a cylinder away, E on the keyboard, select profile, extrude top profile here. Distance to object, rotate the cylinder and click the face at the bottom, and that will totally remove the cylinder. It's done its job now. The operation is cut. OK. And now we have our little washer. Of course, we only did two turns now to see that things work, so now we can go in and start playing with our parameters. Let's move it to the side like this. So the rate on the side we wanted 11. Let's see what Fusion says. After some thinking, we have 11. And of course, now we can play around with things. We can change the number of waves to like seven. I hope things doesn't crash now. Yeah, we can do more waves. We can even do less waves down to four. Like that. It always adds the half one in the design. So we always get this correctly. 
we can of course change uh, the height of a wave to like four millimeters. You make it have a more heavy like this, and we can change the ID, OD, and thickness and so far, of course. So this is how I make a parametric model of this. It's not hundred percent accurate to I think the physical real life object because I think they do some uh, things to get it uh, straight top and bottom, but. This is the closest I can get. I hope you have some seen some fun things and you might learn some things. With that said, take care, see you around, have a good, good weekend and goodbye.